Hey, it's Jake Mace. The video you're about to see is five self-defense techniques from Chinese martial arts that you need for street survival and to win every time. Being a lover and practitioner of the Chinese martial arts, I'm always into fitness. I'm always into flexibility, meditation, qigong, tai chi, kung fu, weaponry, as well as form training. The training that Chinese martial arts offer is more than just conditioning for your body, it's to sharpen the mind. If you don't know, YouTube has a community page. You guys can go to my YouTube channel and check it out right now. I can post photos, video links, and even polls. Recently with one of my polls on the community page, I was shocked to find out how little my followers know about the history of the Chinese martial arts. I posted a poll on the community page that asked, who is the founder of Kung Fu? And you had five choices. Zhang Sunfeng, Sun Lu Tong, Damo, Bodhidharma, and Bruce Lee. 6,000 of you voted, and even though Bodhidharma, the correct answer, won with 58% of the vote, Bruce Lee came in a close second at 32% of the vote. 32% of you out there think that Bruce Lee was the founder of Kung Fu. Kung Fu has a history that goes back 1,500 years. Bruce Lee died in the 1970s. This got me thinking that maybe the audience out there who loves traditional Chinese martial arts is not actually educating themselves to the real history of the Chinese martial arts. What would it look like if we were mentally sharper and what would it look like if we all listened more? While I'm training hard and going through my fitness routine, I'm always listening to something to sharpen my mind. Listening to audiobooks can inspire us, can motivate us, and can even bring us closer together. And there's no better place that I've found to listen than Audible. You can get your first audiobook free along with two selected audio original titles and exclusive fitness programs when you start a 30-day trial. So take the time to listen on Audible. Just visit audible.com slash Jake Mace or text Jake Mace to 500-500 to get started. The book I'm listening to currently is American Shaolin by Matthew Pauly, Flying Kicks, Buddhist Monks, and the Legend of Iron Crotch, and Odyssey into the New China. Sharpen your mind. All the information to begin listening today with Audible is down below this video in the description. The Shaolin monks of old were inspired by tigers and eagles and snakes and leopards and cranes. And they would take the fighting techniques of those animals as well as their health techniques and bring it into their practice as humans to fight better and to live better. I have links below to my other Chinese martial arts self-defense videos I've shown you in the past and I hope you guys learn from them. And when you do, you'll be taking part in this legacy of being inspired and taught by the animal kingdom to make us better humans. The five self-defense techniques I'm about to show you in this video come from the animal kingdom of the Chinese martial arts, and they are not to be taken lightly. They are for street survival. I need you to learn the individual kata, taolu, or form training of each move, and then get a partner and practice like crazy. So let's transition right now to technique number one. Technique one, individual practice. Take your right arm block inside. Take your left arm, scrape from elbow to wrist, and use your left hand to grab something. This will be the opponent's wrist. Step four with your right leg 
take the right hand and pop something, this will be your opponent's elbow. Once you have the arm locked, we're gonna spin to our left, pivot on the front leg, and whip it around 180 degrees. Watch. When I do that, I elbow, pow, right for the head. Then I'm gonna take my other hand, grab onto somebody's hair, tear them down to the ground into a low stance, and chop down. Low bow stance, left hand chopping, right hand pulling the hair down. Pulling the hair down, pulling the hair down. Let me show you guys again, less choppy, a little more fluid. Block right, scrape from elbow to wrist, snatch left. Step forward, lock right, spin to the left, 180, elbow high, grab the hair, tear down, chop to bow stance. Our first technique, the attacker steps in and grabs onto our wrist, trying to pull us somewhere, take us somewhere, or control us. We're gonna turn the tables on them by circling this way, grab onto their wrist, and then if they try to pull us somewhere, use their power against them. So when they pull, we step in toward them. Use my other hand to pop the elbow right here. You can pop, you can slap, or you can try to break. Immediately, spin around outside their line. Elbow to their head. So that spin gives us power for the elbow. Grab onto their hair with this hand and tear them down to the ground using this twist and my body sinking into the earth for power. One more time, the attacker comes in, grabs your arm. Control their arm with that circle. They take you somewhere, use their power to step, pop, spin through, elbow to the head, grab onto the hair, and use their hair and their neck as leverage to tear them down to the floor. Let's see what Nick Listic can do, showing you guys how to do this full speed and in slow-mo. Second technique begins in a left side forward small stance. The left hand is going to block out, lock. Now pull somebody in as the right hand chops and the right leg does this pow, called check kick, oblique kick, or knee trap. So at the same time, we go block, grab, knee trap and strike, put the weight on that cross leg, that oblique kick leg, jump out, and draw down to reverse bow. Let me show you guys more fluidly than the other angle. Left side forward, small stance, block left, grab, chop, knee trap, put that foot down. Jump out, land, reverse bow. Second technique, we're gonna block that hook punch coming at our head. When they hook punch in, your left hand's gonna come up and use the vertical nature of your forearm to block. Immediately, your other hand's gonna cap the face. Try to hit them right in the forehead and the nose. But right after that, we go face, bicep, trying to stun the arm. So it's one, two, we might even grab on. We might even knee into the body and then pull them past using their arm as leverage to get them away from us and we get out of there. One more time, that hook punch comes in, block. Immediately, hit to the face, hit to the bicep, grab on and control their arm, knee up into their body, and then use this arm to get leverage, we call it arm drag, past your body, and get out of there. Third technique begins like the second technique. Step out left, block, capture. Immediately, straight punch right for the midsection. Block again, capture. Pull both hands in as we front 
stiff kick or front thrust kick, then side thrust to the side. Again, this move starts block, capture, straight punch midsection, block, capture, pull in, thrust kick, side kick. Technique three begins the same way as technique two with that hook punch defense. Block here. Now I want you guys to control this and immediately punch right for the neck or for the midsection. So somebody like Nicolistic who's shorter than me is gonna go for my chest, but I'm bigger than her, I might go for her neck or for her face. Punching is always risky. Make sure you have good fundamentals so that your wrist is in line with your power. After that, they might try to hook punch you with the other arm. Block again. Now tear this down together, knee straight up, and we're pulling it at the same time. That pull, knee, combination is like in baseball when a pitcher throws the ball faster the batter can hit it farther one more time they come in for that first punch block snatch it down punch into the midsection block snatch it down pull in knee right up and when they drop or when they're stunned get out of there Fourth technique, left hand clears and then outside circles. We step in, the right hand goes smack. Hold your hand kind of like a claw position that toughens all the muscles in your hand and smack somebody behind the head. Like an insulting smack, pa, like that. Use the power of that smack to help to whirl you around for a 180 back sweep and make this circle on the ground. Keep the heel low. Keep the leg flowing in a circular pattern. Again, left hand circles off. Right leg, right hand steps in, smack behind the head, then whip the body around, circle through, and hold a good stance at the end. In order to maximize this back sweep, we can also get low to the ground. So here's an alteration to the ending of this move. We can circle out, step forward, smack. We can grab onto the floor and really whip that leg around using it like a baseball bat or pulling out the carpet from underneath our opponent. Fourth technique, you're minding your own business. The attacker comes in and tries to control you with a little shoulder grab. Especially if a bully is doing this, somebody bigger than you, this is done a lot. Take your other hand, the opposite. Their left hand, your left hand, but opposite meaning across the line. Circle this out, step in and smack behind their head, right where the neck and the head meet. Kind of fluff up their hair like that. And then you're outside their line. So we're gonna spin through and use our back leg as that sweep to take out their leg and knock them down to the ground. One more time, they come in, they try to control you, intimidate you with that shoulder touch. We're gonna circle out, get outside their line, smack behind their head, spin around and use our other leg to back sweep them off, maybe even push with the chest, drop them down or save them. <laughs> Let me have Nicolistic show you guys full speed and slow-mo. next technique begins from a horse stance. So step out to horse stance, drop it down, and get the hands to this position. Take your right hand and hook. Take your left hand and chop down, pivot your feet. Then smack up with the back of your hands. We're gonna go forearm, chop down, backhand smack up. Forearm down, backhand smack up. And round kick somebody. That inside round kick. Then turn 90 degrees, block out this way. Now drop down almost to one knee. We call this jade ring stance or a lunge. And go down with the back of the wrist, come up with the back of the hand, and then I want you guys to get momentum, boom, and snap this hand like we're trying to flick water droplets forward as far as we can. 
in a good jade ring stance. Let's try it again. Grab right, pivot, and chop down, hit up. Round kick, turn 90 degrees, block. Jade ring stance, low, high, then boom. That smack with the relaxed palm. This relaxed palm is relaxed energy. It's very powerful. You can break boards with this easily. And when done to somebody's face, can break the nose and cause a concussion very easily. So relaxed palm strike. Last technique, that attacker comes in and grabs the wrist on the same side this time. Their left hand, my right hand. I'm gonna circle over this way and control right here, but at the same time, I get inside and I take my forearm, dig into the joint of their arm, and then smack to their head. Relaxed arm is really good for this. Relaxed here, relaxed here. Use the power of your waist and that turning energy to get maximum power. After that, I control this arm and I pull them into that one knee, dropping down, groin, under the chin, and then smack with that relaxed palm right to the face or the nose, hopefully knocking them unconscious. One more time, they come in for that grab. I control the arm, use the power of my turn to hit the joint, hit the face, control this arm, knee up, drop down, groin, face, smack. Let's show you guys how it looks in full speed and slow-mo. Ugh! <clears throat> <clears throat>